I want you to imagine that you're at your favourite cafe and you're having a cuppa with Jesus, your closest and best friend. And today is one of those days where you're really wearing your heart on your sleeve. You know, you're feeling a bit raw. You're a bit fed up with life. And, and so you just lay out all of your struggles before him. You really let Jesus have it. All right? Maybe your conversation would go something like this. Jesus... Why can't I seem to ever remain content in life? I'm working hard. I'm achieving lots of things. I'm looking after my family. I'm financially secure. But I still seem to notice this emptiness within me. I still find myself restless. Sometimes nothing seems to excite me anymore. Sometimes I still find myself waking up at night gripped by fear. Or, or dreading the day ahead of me. Sometimes I notice that my moods can shift so quickly. And even though I really want to be loving towards others, I, I can so easily get jealous and competitive and critical. And sometimes I do things that I really do not want to do just because I need some kind of relief. So, Jesus, where is this fullness of life that you talk about? Where is this peace that you promise? I'm not sure if you've ever had a conversation like this with Jesus before, but I'd highly recommend it. This kind of honesty can really take your relationship with him to a whole new level. You remember... There was a rich man that came to Jesus uh, at one point, and he had a similar kind of dilemma, right? He was wrestling with some deep questions in life. And um, after he sort of poured out his heart and asked his question to Jesus, remember what he did? The first thing he did in response? It says that he, he looked at him steadily and he loved him. He looked with those eyes, you know, that kind of pierce right through, down deep into your heart. <laughs> So after Jesus looks steadily at you there in the cafe and loves you, I suspect that he would respond to your dilemma in a, in a similar kind of way that he, he responded to his disciples. He'd say something like, hey, Paul, <laughs> hey, Juliet, hey, Sam, I am the peace that you are looking for. I can give you a peace and a purpose and a meaning that the world cannot give you. I can give you the peace of heaven. That same message resonates through our gospel today. Jesus gives us his parable about a man who kept building bigger barns. And the reason why he built bigger barns is because he thought that success, financial success, wealth equaled happiness. So his logic was, well, bigger barns, more wealth, more happiness, more peace, more fulfillment. We can understand that logic, right? <laughs> and so God, in this parable, no doubt with a heart full of love for this man, he says to him, you're an idiot. Right? He says, you fool. You're basing your identity and your security and your peace on something which is temporary, which is passing, no wonder so many of us live in fear and anxiety because when, when we put our trust in something which can be taken away from us at any moment, it's a scary place to live. Now, wealth and financial security is not at all a bad thing in itself. It can solve some problems, but Jesus' point here is that wealth cannot solve the problem of inner fulfilment and peace, nor can the pursuit of power or honour or beauty, or popularity, or any of the other worldly values that we pursue in life. Wise old King Solomon, he knew this too, right? We heard it in the first reading. He had everything, everything, right? And now at the end of his life, he's reflecting back, and what does he say? Vanity of vanities. <laughs> it's all vanities. Because all of this stuff that I've accumulated, I've realized it's all external value. It has no internal value. 
Jesus' point today is that the only way to find true peace is to become rich in the sight of God, to amass a different kind of treasure, eternal treasure, the only treasure that will keep on giving to you because it can't be taken away. Jesus focused so much of his teaching around this concept of the kingdom of heaven because he knew that this kingdom is the perfection, it is the peace that our hearts are longing for. It's in this kingdom that we find a whole different level of wealth. A wealth, a rich, a rich, a richness that we will never be satisfied without. St. Paul today, he draws together all of our readings for us. And um, there's so much in this second reading, we could spend a month on it. But, uh, but his big crucial point is that this kingdom of peace, this kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, however you want to talk about it, is already ours. We already have it, right? You hear him today, he says... Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on things that are on the earth, because you have died and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. Paul's point is that because you have received Christ into your heart, this kingdom already lives within you. You see, the kingdom of heaven is is not so much this place that we will get to one day, right? But it's, it's... It's a different dimension of life where God is fully present. It's full of the presence of God. And so Paul's saying today that uh, not only is this kingdom already within you, because Christ is within you, but if you want to access this kingdom, what you need to do is you need to embrace and to live kingdom values. right? And this, this can be where our Christian journey can sort of get a little bit unstuck. I remember when I really started to to pursue my faith, uh, I'd had this experience of of the love of God and the goodness of God, and and, uh, it just gave me this desire. I really wanted to be more like Jesus, right? You ever had that that desire? And um, so I, I made a real effort to be more kind, to be more compassionate, to be more generous towards others, to live for others more than living for myself. And, and of course, that was a good thing to do. But what I eventually realised is that my actions were not always consistent with my heart. Have you ever noticed that? I was coming across as patient, as compassionate, as kind, as generous, but, but deep down, I was still a bit stingy. Right, I was still frustrated and angry and, and quite self-centered. There was a disconnect between what I was doing out there and what was going on in here. And, and the issue was that I was trying to live out these new values of the kingdom of God from an old heart, right? Or what St. Paul calls our old self. See, we can, we can grit our teeth. And we can try and follow Jesus in our own strengths. Like, oh, I'm going to be so, I'm going to be so kind today. Hello, <laughs> you'd be like that. Hello, I'm fine. <laughs> but, but doing that is exhausting, right? It, it usually will leave us feeling resentful or bitter or burnt out. I realised that if I really wanted to embrace and live the values of heaven, my heart needed a change. I needed to live. Uh, or learn to live from my new self, as St. Paul says. Put on your new self. You see, we can't give to others what we don't already have within ourselves, right? As much as we might try. So when Paul today talks about focusing on heavenly things, he's really talking about the process of being transformed, of being made new from the inside out, Uh, a word that the church uses to describe this is, is sanctification, right, or, or, or divinization. It's that process of becoming more and more like Christ. Paul says that we are all destined for this. We're all destined to be moulded into the image of Christ. This is the deepest purpose, the greatest meaning of our lives. 
So here's the key takeaway I want to leave you with today. We will become rich in God. We will experience the kingdom of heaven to the degree that we are transformed from the inside out. Now, the irony in all this is that this process of transformation can often be quite difficult. It can be quite hard because it means facing ourselves, right? But nothing can possibly be more enriching or more fulfilling than becoming more and more like Christ from the inside. Nothing satisfies us more than than noticing how the heart of Jesus is working in us and through us. It is the most beautiful, fulfilling, enriching thing we could ever hope for. And that is the riches that keeps on giving to us, Jesus says. This uh, transformation of our hearts is a constant and a lifelong journey. And today, Paul gives us two things that we can do to keep progressing in this process of of change and growth. The first thing he gives us to do is to keep pursuing Christ. He says, when Christ is revealed and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. See, the truth is that we cannot change our hearts. We cannot. Impossible, right? We might think we can, but we can't, right? But Paul's point here is that the more that we come to know Christ, the more that we, he will make us like him. All the answers we need are found in Christ. So as we pursue him through his word, as we reflect on his word, as we receive the sacraments, as we come together to worship as community, as we, as we um, love and serve others, all of that helps us to... Expose us, exposes us to the love and the light of Christ, which, which changes us, which heals us, which, which, which renews our heart. The second thing that St. Paul gives us to do is uh, to deal with our blockages. See, Paul uses some pretty strong language today. You might have sort of blocked it out because it's too strong, right? But I'll repeat it just in case you didn't hear it. (laughs) He said, you must kill everything in you that belongs only to earthly life. And then he rattles off this list. What Paul's talking about here is facing the obstacles to our connection with heaven. There's stuff that gets in the way of God coming into our lives, right? And changing us. And so we need to learn how to, how to, how to deal with those obstacles. Uh, St. John of the Cross gives us a really helpful image. He talks about the sun uh, shining through a window. And he says, um, you know, that's, that's like the love of God, constantly beaming into our hearts and into our minds. But he says, um, you know, when you see the sun coming through, you, you start to notice all the little smudges and the grime and the dust on the window. He says that the same is, is true in the spiritual life, you know, as, as we come close to Christ and as his, as his love starts to beam into our minds and our hearts, we start to see the smudges. Huh? We start to see the dust. We see the grime, our sin and our pride and our doubts and our hurts and all of that stuff that gets in the way. Now, seeing these things, as, as hard as it can be, is really important if we want to progress in the spiritual life. God helps us to see our obstacles so that we can work with him in bringing freedom and bringing healing to our lives. So when you notice your smudges, I want to encourage you to see it as a good sign. It probably means that you're coming closer to Christ and and, and his light is helping you to see it. It probably means that he's helping you to see it because it's, it's already starting to be healed and he wants you to work with that, right? The key for us is that we, we, we don't try and fix it ourselves, right? Oh, there's that jealousy again. Oh, I just need to get rid of that. You know, I need to fix that one or, or, or you know, whatever it may be. Whatever, whatever the, the, the dust or the grime that we notice. The first step we need to do is just to notice it. Just notice it and just accept that it's there, right? 
rather than getting um, kind of frustrated with yourself about it, oh, I'm still behaving that way, I'm still thinking that way, you know, that's, that's just the ego talking, right? Don't worry about all that. Just notice it, accept it, and do your best just to look at it with compassion. That's right, oh, yeah, okay. Maybe, it's, maybe I'm acting that way because I'm, I'm hurt or I've been hurt or there's that old wound playing out again or, or, or I'm afraid or I'm anxious, whatever it may be. But look at it with compassion. And then as best you can, just, just surrender it over to Christ. Keep, keep giving it over to God. Ask him to heal and to, to transform these parts of your heart and then just be patient. Just be patient as he leads you on a journey of healing and transformation. See, God is usually not in a hurry like we are. <laughs> we want to deal with it like that, right? But, but God, God normally just takes a bit of time. So we need to be patient. We need to keep trusting. Here's my one-line summary. The more that we work with Christ to change our hearts, the more that we will experience within ourselves the King and the Kingdom of Peace.